What if instead of dealing with controllers and keyboards, you could control the game with your own mind? Introducing the Muse. This device gets strapped onto your head and takes in your electrical face inputs. But what a game. Using only this device and no other peripheral devices actually work? Well, stick around because we're about to find out. And I definitely can't do this alone. So I recruited some of my friends who are actually kind of smart to help me out. So in this video, we're gonna make a game connected to the headset and control a game with our brain waves. For this project, I need to hit four key milestones. First, we have to correctly measure our brain waves. Second, we're gonna need to actually make the game. Third, we're gonna need to connect the device inputs to the game. And finally, we're gonna play the game and come to the ultimate verdict of if this is poop or scoop. That sounded much better in my head. So like a good start to any project, we all went to do some research. So my friends and I went scouring the internet to find how to connect the device to the game. One of the first things we did was we found some code online for a mind-controlled, no internet dino game. This game runs off of JavaScript and Bluetooth. So to test things out, we cloned this repo and now the code is all mine. <laughs> So in order to test this code, I connected the device to the browser with Bluetooth and it worked quite well actually. The way this works is that it uses your blinks to jump. So when you blink, it jumps on a dino game and it's pretty fun. Now I don't want to get too technical, but basically the way this works is that the sensors on the device are grabbing a lot of data, which is all in these numbers. But then this data gets parsed via Bluetooth on the web. Boring. Okay, so all you really have to know is that it takes data when you blink and clench your jaw. And depending Depending on which one you do, you can send inputs to your game. So while it may not be exactly measuring your brain, you're still controlling your game without your hands, which is pretty awesome. After this, we moved on to trying to get the device to connect directly with Unity, which is what I'm using to make the game. The problem is that we did some testing with the Muse libraries online for Unity, and we found no success in connecting this to Unity. We used scenes that were already created, and then we couldn't connect the Bluetooth. So then we tried to make our own setup, and that just wouldn't work at all. We spent hours configuring this. One of the big problems with this is that there's just no documentation for this online. A lot of these forums and videos were last updated like seven years ago, so it's not like we had much help here. At an impasse, we came to two main choices. Either we keep going and try to solve the problem in Unity, or we take the website Bluetooth Dino Game code, remove the Dino Game, and send WebSocket signals to Unity to control our game through a Bluetooth connection through the web. So naturally we chose that. So we found a way to send those WebSocket signals to Unity and it's actually working, which is great. So the top square here represents blinking and the bottom square represents clenching your jaw. So all of these calculations and stuff are happening on the web and then it's just sending these inputs to Unity so we can make the game with them. Now that we have our input stuff for the brain game connected to our game engine, it's time to make a game. And since there's not too many options for input, we've got to go with a more more simple style of game. I loaded up Unity, my preferred game engine, and created a basic game following the inputs we require. I know it's not the most glamorous looking right now, but stay with me. So right now, this cube is you. Actually, it's kind of hard to see now, so I'm gonna make it blue. Much better. This blue cube is you, and you can move left and right to dodge the obstacles by clenching your jaw or blinking. And that's pretty much it. It's basically a worse Subway Surfers. So now it's time we actually make it look much better. So I imported a tune and outline shader to make things nicer, and then I decided to go with a desert style game, because I was kind of thinking, well, you're probably a car, right, if you're moving around, so why not have a road trip style setting? So I went on itch.io and I imported this low poly asset pack into our game to put everything together. I also added fog because it was kind of weird to see all the obstacles and stuff spawning in in front of you. Finally, it's about time we pimp our ride. So I replaced the cube with with a nice blue sedan. On top of that, I added some more effects and animations, as well as new obstacles that aren't just cubes. In the distance, you can see rocks and cactuses flying by. So once I put in the new obstacles, I forgot to add the obstacle tag to all objects, which is used for the logic of killing you, which means that you can just now bulldoze through all the objects, which wasn't the plan, but it's really fun, I'm not gonna lie. Like I'm just running through 
everything. But unfortunately, like the evil developer I am, I'm going to fix it and remove all those fun features to make it actually a normal experience. It is kind of slow now and it's kind of easy, but we have to keep in mind that the brain device might have some delay and inaccuracy. So maybe the slower speed might be for the best for testing purposes. Finally, we need some kind of objective for this game. So I added a score system so it can track your distance and now the game has a clear goal to get the farthest you possibly can. On top of that, the game will save your highest score. Now you can try to beat your high score and try to get the longest run distance that you possibly can. At this point, the game is ready to go. So I replaced the keyboard inputs with the blink and jaw clench variables and it's ready to play. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, it's all, you know, it's got some problems the game, but hey. I, I, this is the new wave of gaming. Handless gaming. <laughs> Brain controlled gaming. Brain controlled gaming. All right, so as you can see, it's working pretty well. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Yo, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back at it, this footage has a lot of just silence, but you gotta keep watching. <laughs> I was blinking at it. It's tweaking. It's tweaking. Okay. <laughs> With his face. Just for a reminder, blinking will take you left and clenching your jaw will put you on the right. Okay, I'm gonna go right. I'm gonna go left. It's all about the compression. No, no. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it fumbles. <laughs> <laughs> There's like nothing. Okay. Oh, no, I did it too late. Or early, fuck. You're watching a pro, oh shit. You're watching a pro mind controller. I'm gonna move the car right or left. <laughs> I'm gonna move it right. Oh shit. What are you crazy? Oh. For the age old question, can a game be played with only your mind and no other peripherals? Well, I would say absolutely yes it can. While the technology is still pretty new and there's a lot of problems with it, we still got a somewhat reliable gameplay from one of the more affordable models of this Muse headband. I'm sure you would get much better results from a higher end headband, but let's be honest, I'm not really liquid right now, so we just gotta make do with what we've got. If I was to try something like this again, I would definitely want to use more of the headband's functions such as the accelerometer for potentially tilting your head to add a new dimension of gameplay. Because right now the game is pretty simple and I would definitely want a way to fix this in the future. Maybe we could use the tilt and the gyroscope of the headband to move your character around and maybe make it so that your blink and jaw could be used to jump or slide under the obstacles to make it more dynamic and fun. Something else we should continue working on would be a way to connect the headband directly to Unity to get rid of the latency or even get a more expensive but capable model to have more flexibility in the future. So that's about it for this project. I tried something different for this video, so if you liked it or just want me to stick to making regular games, let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching, and if you don't subscribe right now, I'm gonna eat all your watermelons. <laughs>